Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Ram Krishna Hegde. Uh, today, let's discuss about uh, media access control. Uh, in that, uh, in that uh, topic, the particular topic we need to discuss here is uh, channelization. And uh, in this lecture, uh, I would like to mention that I have uh, material. Some of the material I've uh, taken directly from the Mozart book, which I've referred in this uh, in these slides also. Now, let's start with our uh, topic today: channelization. Now, before the state of a moving into channelization, uh, let us uh, you know uh, see the scenario, how real-time scenario normally works here. Uh, in a real-time, what happens, you have a uh, multiple stations. These multiple stations normally uh, share the uh, a single channel, right? That means the available bandwidth uh, of a single channel is normally shared by different stations. Now, when the sharing is done by the different station, how actually a uh, channel can able to share uh, the available bandwidth of the or maybe uh, different stations can able to share available bandwidth of this station, maybe a, a channel, right? Uh, this we need to discuss today. Uh, this is one of the very important uh, thing we need to discuss in this area is called uh, channelization. Here, channelization is something about is a multiple access method. Uh, in that, uh, which I have given a definition here, in which the available bandwidth of a link is shared in time. See, there are three things you need to note out here. Three things here the available band bandwidth of the link is shared in terms of time second one is a frequency the third one is through code there are three things you need to note out here one is a time frequency and through code between different stations uh, in this section the channelization we need to discuss there are uh, three types of protocols one is called uh, fdma second one is cdma the third one is uh, cdma we'll discuss one by one uh, what is this? Uh, all three, all three protocols are about. So let's start with the FDMA. The FDMA, the name, uh, you know, uh, you, the name the stands for uh, Frequency Division uh, uh, Multiple Access. Uh, in FDMA, what happens? Uh, the available bandwidth is divided into frequency bands, different frequency bands, and each station is allocated uh, allocated a particular frequency band to send its data. Right. Uh, in other words, each band is reserved for a specific station and it belongs to that station all the time right the particular frequency band is allocated to a uh, different station right uh, the particular station and it is uh, you know the frequency allocated for all the time in the sense that particular station suppose want to send a data should have to send a data in that uh, frequency band only right and this is what the meaning here now uh, uh there is one problem you can uh, you know one thing you need, you need to note down in this case uh there may be a problem with the station interference right there may be a problem with the station interference because all the different stations are uh, using a single channel uh, but of course there are uh, frequency bands are allocated to every station but even though uh, there is a chances of uh, station interference uh, station interference right uh, to avoid the station interference i can say that to prevent the station interference the allocated bands, right? Allocated bands are separated by, separated from one another. There are different frequency bands, right? Frequency bands. These all these different frequency bands are separated by one another by a small guard bands. By a small guard bands. Okay. If you can see this particular diagram here, if you can see this particular diagram, then uh, let us go to this notation. I'll just show you that. Okay. If you see this particular uh, plot diagram. There are four stations here, right? Station one, station two, station three, and station four, right? And uh, this is what the single channel. All these four stations are uh, using the common channel to communicate, right? This is a common channel. All the four stations are using the single channel. This particular channel uh, used to, used to communicate. Now, uh, how this common channel can be used by all the four stations here? As I mentioned earlier, in the frequency division multiplexing. The available bandwidth is divided into different frequency bands. And every individual station, for example, station one, you have station two, three, and four, all the individual stations are allocated with a specific frequency band. Sp specific frequency band. You can see this whole channel is divided into four frequency bands here. One is the blue color, second one is yellow, the third one is the green, and the fourth one is pink color. So all those, uh, you know, all the individual uh, frequency bands. Are separated by a small uh, guard we'll call it as this is a small separated by guard bands small guard bands you can see this to avoid uh, station interference you can see between these two between the uh, frequency bands 
uh, it is separated by a small guard uh, bands small guard bands okay to to prevent the uh, station interference now uh, if we can see this uh, uh, blue color this blue color frequency band is allocated to station number station 1 and yellow color is allocated to station 2 uh, green color is allocated to station 3 and pink is allocated to station 4 right now the suppose the station wants to station 1 wants to send the data it should have to send the data it, it can send the data uh, in its allocated time uh, what is that uh, the frequency band only it's allocated frequency band only here what is allocated frequency band here is a blue color so the station one can be able to send the data in this particular frequency band only, right at the same way station two can be able to send the data in this particular frequency band only at the same time and the station four also can be able to send the data in this particular frequency band only right here all the three stations are sending the data but one of the stations station three is uh, don't have any data to send it that means whenever don't have any send uh, data to be sent over the channel then that particular station becomes silent that particular station becomes silent uh, the meaning of the silent is no data to be sent along the channel that's what the meaning here okay so uh, this is what normally called as a frequency division uh, multiple access right and uh, in the fdma what happens it specifies predetermined frequency band predetermined frequency band for the entire period of communication you understand the meaning of it once again fdma actually specifies predetermined uh, frequency band for the entire period of communication that means fdma can able to support continuous flow of data or maybe streams of data because whatever the frequency band is allocated it is for the entire period of communication that is why it normally supports for a uh, continuous flow of uh, data now uh, one of the very important thing we can uh, uh, see we discuss here uh, in an earlier module we have discussed about um, uh, during this multiplexer right we have discussed about uh, uh, what is that fdm frequency division multiple multiplexer right see uh, the conceptualize i can say fdma that means frequency division multiple access and frequency division multiplexing fdma and fdm conceptually look similar but there is a lot of difference between these two one of the first difference you can see is that uh, fdma actually uh, lies in the physical layer okay fdma actually lies in the physical layer normally uh, does the work in the physical layer and fdma is normally concerned in the concerned about data link layer okay fdma is normally concerned in the data link layer this is the major difference fdm frequency division multiplexer normally concerned in the physical layer frequency division multiple access fdma is concerned with the data link layer, right this is a major difference apart from that in fdm what happens it combines the uh, combines the loads of combines the loads from the low bandwidth channel and transmit them by uh, high bandwidth channel high bandwidth channel in the sense actually uh, what actually happens here it combines all the uh, low bandwidth okay low this is actually from the uh, low pass uh, band okay low pass band and uh, uh, once it combines all those things you should, you should have to transmit to the uh, high bandwidth right for that what actually does uh, in fdm uh, it uses a multiplexer in fdm it uses the multiplexer to modulate the signal modulate the signal combines them and creates the band pass signal creates the band pass signal this is what normally happens in the FDM. But in FDMA, what happens? The data link layer in each station, okay? The data link layer in each station tells its physical layer to make band pass signal from a data pass to it. This is what normally happens in FDMA. That means the, uh, the signal must be created in the allocated frequency band only. Signal must be created in the allocated frequency band only. This is what normally happens in FDM. Okay. And let me come back to the uh, second protocol here. Right. Let me come back to the second protocol. Of course, which, which I already told you, the FDMA, the available bandwidth of the uh, common channel is uh, divided into bands that are separated by guard bands. This is what we have discussed in the uh, discussed already. Now let me come back to the uh, other very important one. We'll call it as uh, uh, TDMA, right? Uh, this is time division multiplexer 
okay this is a time division multiple access tdma tdm is a time division multiplexer but what we have to discuss here we will see the difference between those these two also in the later stage but we will discuss about tdma time division multiple access time division multiple access let us discuss about uh, tdma here here tdma what happens the uh, stations share the available bandwidth of the channel in time here in a tdma stations share the available bandwidth of the channel in time it concerned about based on the time the channel you know the bandwidth is uh, the different stations can able to share the bandwidth here each station is allocated a time during which the station can send its data right in a fdma what happens uh, the station can able to send the data in the allocated frequency band but here in tdma what happens the station can able to send the data in allocated time period only because every station will be allocated the particular time period in that particular time period itself the station can able to send the data this is what normally happens in the tdma now one of the problem you can able to uh, you can able to uh, uh, make a you, you can able to identify here uh, is that uh, is a synchronization issue here in tdma is one of the problem uh, exists is a synchronization between the two stations suppose two station wants to communicate okay suppose here uh, see what happens before uh, uh, suppose the two station wants to communicate what happens there is a issue with the synchronization that is issue with the synchronization uh, see uh, this issue is because every individual station every individual station supposed to know supposed to know what is the beginning of the uh, is supposed to know what is the beginning of the allocated time and the location of the time also location of the slot also location of the slot i'm talking about right that means every individual station each station need to know beginning of the time slot and location of the slot also uh, what happens there is a one of the issue we have discussed earlier also called a propagation delay because of the propagation delay what happens that may be a chances of synchronization uh, issue in uh, tdma now uh, to compensate this propagation delay there is a guard time there is a guard time can be inserted here there is a guard time can be inserted between the time slot now let me come back to this particular figure how the tdma normally works here i'll just explain to you how tdma normally works okay how tdma normally works here this case what happens see again uh, same as earlier there are four stations we have taken here station one station two uh, station three and station four this is what the channel common channel all those four stations normally using right now as per the definition of tdma what happens every individual station is allocated a particular type slot that means the available bandwidth of a common channel is actually divided uh, divided into uh, different time slots different type slots right now uh, every individual station is assigned with a, a particular time slot suppose in this particular case you can see this is a common channel is divided into four, four time slot here because there are four stations there are four stations here that is why there are four time slots are divided this is a blue color time slot this is actually uh, allocated to station 1 and yellow color time slot is allocated to station 2 uh, green color is allocated to station 3 and pink color is allocated to station 4 the meaning is simple here you can see uh, this station 1 can able to send the data in this allocated time only in this allocated time only right and station 2 can able to send the data in this allocated you can see in this allocated time mode right one thing you can make out here right between these two in the sense between the uh, different time slot uh, there is a small guard is inserted there is a small guard is inserted as i said guard time right small guard time is inserted here the reason is because of the propagation delay in tdma one of the problem what we have identified is a synchronization issue right to prevent the synchronization issue what issue what we supposed to do we need to insert small guard time right small guard time that is what you can see here between between these uh, uh, you know like a time slot you can see the small guard time here small guard time is inserted between uh, between uh, between them right to prevent the uh, that uh, the issue with the propagation delay right what you discussed earlier right and this is what normally happens in the tdm right you can see the blue is belongs to this time slot is belongs to station one yellow is belongs to this 
So like this, all the four station can able to uh, can have uh, their own uh, time slot to send the data here, right? Now let me come back to the uh, topic here. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there are two things. One is uh, see, in, during multiplexer, we have discussed uh, one of the method called TDM, that is time division multiplexer, right? And here, what we are discussing is that what we are discussing here is the TDMA. Now, again, like the FDM and FDM, here also TDMA and TDM almost looks conceptually looks similar, but again, there's a lot of difference. As like earlier, uh, TDM time division multiplexer normally concerned with the physical layer, right? Physical layer of the station. But when it comes to TDMA time uh, division multiple axis, this is actually concerns in data link layer of the station. Data link layer of the station, right? Uh, so uh, that means uh, the another very important difference is what actually TDMA does. It combines the data from the slower channels and transmits them by using the faster channels. This is what normally happens in the TDM. Now TDM, what happens? The data link layer of each station, data link layer of the each station tells its physical layer to use the allocated time slot only. <coughs> slot only. That means in TDMA, the data link layer of each station tells its physical layer to use the allocated time slot only. This is what normally happens in the TDM, TDMA, right? Th this is another difference between TDM and TDMA. But conceptually, it looks almost similar. But there is a lot of difference uh, in a uh, uh, lot of difference, right? You can see this. One of the differences: TDM is basically concerned in the physical layer. TDMA actually concerned in the data link layer. Another very important difference is TDMA actually combines data from the slower channel and transmits them by using the faster channels. In a TDMA, what happens? The data link layer of each station tells its physical layer to use the allocated time slots only, right? This, these are the difference between TDM and TDMA. So uh, uh, this is about uh, TDMA. So as I mentioned here in TDMA, the bandwidth is just one channel, right? That is time shared between different stations. Time shared between different stations that I, I have already discussed with you. So thank you very much uh, for watching my video. So if you have any uh, clarifications or any doubts, please uh, get back to me uh, through my email ID. Uh, hopefully the some of the concepts are clear. Thank you very much.